gentlemen, and welcome to Up The Use, a channel dedicated to my love and hopefully your love, all things Colts United. I want to start by saying please head over to our Twitter and Instagram pages at Up The Use Official and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now what is Up The Use? Up The Use is going to be a channel that takes a look into each and every Colts United game from a fan's eye. We'll be talking about the opposition and previous encounters, major talking points from the game, both mine and also your opinions on the result, and hopefully some interviews with some fans and other League 2 content creators. But this week, we had our opening fixture of the 2023-2024 League 2 season against Swindon Town. Well, we would have if Mother Nature hadn't decided to open the floodgates and give us enough rain to fill 10 Olympic-sized swimming pools in the space of just three hours. And with just 30 minutes to go until kickoff, referee Mr. Anthony Backhouse consulted his team and postponed the game. Which is a shame because after that announcement was made, Michael Flynn and his players went over to thank the fans for coming and you was in fine voice and would have been very loud for the duration of the game. I want to go on record and say to every single Swindon fan that made the over 300 mile round trip, I feel for you. I live about 20 minutes away from the stadium and as I was driving in, I could tell that the game wasn't going to go ahead. I hope that all of you can make the reverse fixture and if you can't, I truly hope that you're able to get your money back. Now let's take a look back at the last time Colchester and Swindon met at the JobServe Community Stadium. Colchester were able to come away with all three points after former player Luke Hannett headed the ball over the head of the Robins keeper, Sol Brin, from an Al Amin Kazim corner. But Swindon didn't come to the JSC to sit back and try and nick a win. They went close early on when Fraser Blake Tracy headed the ball goalwards only for Kieran O'Hara to tip it over the bar. Swindon also controlled the game with having nearly 70% possession and 11 shots in total. But unfortunately, O'Hara and Flynn had very good games and kept the scoreline at 1-0 to the U's. Since that game on New Year's Day, there have been some changes at the county ground. After joining the club in July 2021, Scott Lindsay left the club on the 11th of January to join Crawley Town on a two and a half year deal, which is where he still is currently. So in step Gavin Gunning and Steve Mildenall as joint caretaker managers until the 31st of January when Jody Morris was appointed as the new man in charge. After 18 matches, winning 4, drawing 4 and losing 10, Morris was sacked by the Robins and Gavin and Steve took charge for the final game of the season in the 2-1 home win against old boss Lindsay's Crawley Town. Now to present day, former Newport County and Walsall manager Michael Flynn is now in charge. Let's take a look back at Michael Flynn's time as a manager so far. Whilst at Newport County from 2017 to 2021, he managed 250 games, winning 102, drawing 65 and losing 83. That's a win percentage of 40% and whilst at Walsall, he managed 68 games, winning 21, drawing 22 and losing 25 with a win percentage of 30%. He also has picked up the Manager of the Month award on four separate occasions, three times for Newport and once for Walsall. Since Flynn has been in charge, he has brought in some new players and will no doubt be implementing a new style of play. Hopefully, you can have a great season ahead of you. Now switching over to the home dugout, a man that Swindon fans know all too well, Mr Ben Garner. Since Ben has been in charge of the U's, his record currently sits at 11 games, 3 wins, 5 draws and 3 losses, with a win percentage of 27%. Garner is a manager that likes to play attacking and possession-based football and likes to develop young talent. Since his time in charge, we have seen Samson Tavide keep his spot up front and make a great partnership with John Akinde and also seeing promising young winger Jaden Fevre be given a go in the wing-back role. And with an average squad age of just 23.3 years, this season we could also see a few youngsters be given some more game time, like Triple M, Marley Marshall Miranda, Gene Kennedy, Che Cooper and Bradley Ihoven, just to name a few. Now on to transfers. So far we have seen six new players join the team. Nico Lawrence, Ellis Iandalo, Owen Goodman, Mario Bandela, Tom Smith and Joe Taylor. Taking a look at each position, starting with the two new goalkeepers, Owen Goodman and Tom Smith, Owen has joined us on a season-long loan from Premier League side Crystal Palace. The tall 6 foot four goalkeeper made 28 appearances for Palace's under-21s last season, keeping seven clean sheets. He also made it onto the first team bench on four separate occasions. For me, a very good goalkeeper and one to fight for his position. Now welcoming back Tom Smith. Tom joined us last season in January and didn't see much first team action until both Sam Hornby and Kieran O'Hara picked up an injury at the same time. 
So in step Smith, and he was brilliant. In his first three games, he kept three clean sheets in a 4-0 home win against Doncaster Rovers, 1-0 away win against Salford, and a 0-0 draw away at Crawley. After returning to Arsenal, he was let go, and he has now returned, keeping him in Essex until summer 2025. Moving on to another Arsenal youngster, Mario Bandera, the young central midfielder, joins us, just like Goodman, on a season-long loan. He's an all-round central midfielder with both defensive and creative qualities and alongside Arthur Reid could be a very important player for the U's this season. Now another name that Swindon fans will recognise, Ellis Iandalo. The 25-year-old spent seven seasons at the Robins and is a jack of all trades. He can play in the midfield and also as a wing-back which is where he's been playing in pre-season and was where he was due to start on Saturday. Next up is Nico Lawrence. Nico has joined us from newly championship side Southampton and is a very promising young centre-back. Last season, he was playing with former Colts United striker Frank Newbel and midfielder Tom Lapsley at national lead side Torquay. Despite not being able to help the goals stay in the league, he was an instant success, winning two Player of the Month awards and also picking up Young Player of the Season despite only signing in January on a short loan. Lastly, Joe Taylor is the newest of the six to come in. Having plans to be announced at the start of the game, he was then announced later via Twitter. Taylor is another loan signing and will be with the U's until the end of the season. He is yet to score for the Hatters, but did have a late goal disallowed in the Championship playoff final against Coventry. But he had his Wembley moment by scoring a penalty in the shootout, which helped Luton get promoted to the top flight of English football. Now, just before we finish, let's take a look at the current squad going into the new season. I feel confident. We have good depth in each position. Obviously, we're still unsure about Junior and his move to Stoke, but I feel if he leaves for the £1.5 million fee that we're asking for, that will give us the funds to be able to bring in a very good replacement. In the midfield, we look strong. Reed, Bandera, Triple M on the defensive side, Nubi, J and Chilvers on the attackive side, and up front, Akinde, Tavide, Hopper and Taylor could each make a great partnership together. And that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. As I said at the start, please head over to our Twitter and Instagram pages at UpTheUseOfficial and please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments your opinions on what I cover today. I will be back next week with a review of both the trip in the EFL Cup to Cardiff and also Bradford away in the league. Thank you so much and as always, UpTheUse. Up